I've been doing this BS for nine years. I started Rebel Taxi in 2010, right when the decade started, so I've seen some real BS in animation. It's the top. However many contenders I put in this video, worst cartoons of the 2010s. And stay tuned for my upcoming video, the best cartoons of the decade. So be sure to recommend what you feel is the best or underappreciated that I should look into if I haven't already, or just post about other worst cartoons I missed out on. It's Juice and Jam time. Finn Mac Missile, British Intelligence. So mighty, average intelligence. Pixar's Cars 2 and Disney Pixar's Planes, or should I say Disney's Planes since Pixar didn't bother with this cash grab. The funny thing is, the Cars franchise is some of Pixar's least profitable movies in terms of box office. So why do they have so many of these sequels and spin-offs? Merchandising. Yeah, these things exist to promote merchandise. Kids love toy vehicles already, but if you put a face on them for added character, watch this. Here's a car, but now, hot damn, son! Planes 1 and 2 and Cars 2 are the most guilty of being cash-ins. Though, admittedly, Cars 1 and 3 I enjoyed. Ah! Rickleberry and Paradise PD. Same show, different channels. When it comes to generic adult cartoons and flat art styles that want to be the next family guy, these two are what come to mind. Jokes that worry about being offensive first rather than being funny. That's the opposite of what you should be doing. But to be real with you all, some of these jokes I liked. Look, Drawn Together is one of my favorite shows. Shut up. All right, here's the rule. Once we open this can, we have to eat whatever's in it. Cans without labels, or should I say cartoons without jokes. A kickstarted cartoon by Ren Stimpy creator John Kay. What a shame, he was quite the influential artist in the same way heroin has an influence. This garbage took seven years to make. Compare that to Redline that took the same time. If this is the Redline of American animation, that tells you exactly what's wrong with this country. There's so much wrong here. Weird choices in color shading, strange 3D props and backgrounds that resemble a funhouse mirror. Plus, the voices were clearly recorded from different rooms in different universes. Are you gonna eat that face? Or do I have to take my belt off? Yeah, I bet John K tells that to a lot of kids too. Cans Without Labels was intended to be a tribute to vintage animation, but it's about as vintage as catching polio. And that's where we come in. The most important invention in the history of communication. Emojis. <laughs> It's bad enough to make a movie about emojis, but this film came out right after a slew of bad press from Sony Pictures Animation. They canceled several projects like Gandhi Tartakovsky's Popeye and Lauren Foss's Medusa. The emoji movie didn't cause this, but it was just released near the same time frame to be blamed for it. And most heartbreaking of all is the emoji movie masturbator is still on the loose. We're on your ass, you motherfucker. The emoji movie marked possibly the lowest point for Sony Pictures Animation, but then they made Spider-Verse, so Oh, we're cool. Hello, Napoleon. Hey, Pedro. Napoleon Dynamite, the animated series? Who asked for this? Me. A show that came out at the wrong time, eight years after the movie. It was too long after the movie's popularity and too soon for it to be really nostalgic. I love Napoleon Dynamite, but this cartoon basically gentrifies that unique sense of awkward humor into a typical adult Fox cartoon that lasted six episodes. I didn't think that movie's humor could translate into a series, but with how Adult Swim and internet humor has developed into this odd surrealism, I think now it could work if they tried it again, maybe in live action this time. Life can be a real bear. <laughs> Especially for Nor. What good is a bear if he can't even hunt, huh? Why didn't you take a picture? It'll last longer. 
Two for the price of one, Norma the North and Arctic Dogs, both ice-related movies from Assemblage Entertainment. Arctic Dogs is so uninspired and made so little money that it wasn't even worth making. While Norma the North at least gave us the Arctic Shake or whatever dance this was supposed to be, somehow it was able to fund two sequels, yet it was not able to bring back Rob Schneider to voice Norm. Imagine being so terrible that Rob Schneider said no to you. That's the quality we're dealing with here. I don't care, it's super cool that- the final Nickelodeon show before they got tired of Butch Hartman's BS. Bunsen is a beast. It's loud and annoying. I think that sums up half of Nickelodeon shows since 2005. Breadwinners? Oh, that happened. I don't know what else. Pig, goat, banana, cricket. It had a cool style. That's fine. Hey, when's the wax coming out? That's gonna be freaking great. What else we got on here? Sanjay and Craig. Now, you know what? Fuck y'all. I like that show. Planet Sheen. Mmm, nah, I, I saw some episodes for the first time making this vid. I thought it was pretty funny. I have never heard of Earth. And you speak Zanuian. Wow, Zanuian sounds just like English. Listen up, fat cat burglar. I'm giving you one last chance to hand them over before I cash in your coupons for you. It is you, the great Dex detective who's about to take a fall. Food fight? That came out this decade? Oh man, I don't know what you want me to say. What is there left to say? I asked that question because I never watched it and I'm just trying to bide for time. Everyone else already reviewed it. I don't got time for sloppy seconds or thirds. I guess sloppy 50th at this point. If you ain't first, you're last. Forget that. Ew! <laughs> oh, this is just great. Okay, I watched it. Wow, so Food Fight was meant to be the toy story of food products. They even cameo corporate mascots with a message about how generic brands are evil. Well, sorry I can't afford name brand, asshole. Apparently, Food Fight's director is making a Tetris movie also. That sounds fantastic. What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm gonna bite your face. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. I'm a cat, just kidding. What's going on? Who are you guys? I don't care. This is my worst nightmare. Personally, I thought Prom Solvers was okay, but that art style, man. Wow. If you want a cartoon that doubles as a colorblind test, then I got the show for you. It's pretty ugly, but I respect how experimental it got. Around the same time, we also got Secret Mountain Ford Awesome and Uncle Grandpa Soon After, both from the same creator, Pete Brownguard. <laughs> It's weird, like, during the 90s, we all grew up on all sorts of gross-out shows, but it seems like people these days aren't too fond of that. Fort Awesome and Prom Solvers canceled early, while the last few unaired episodes were just dumped on Netflix. But now Netflix no longer has them, so they're kind of just lost media at this point. Rip in peace. Though, Uncle Grandpa had some funny segments in there, okay? You know, it's not that bad, guys. That's why we have new experiences. <laughs> Welcome to the magical world of the Box Trolls, where one lucky boy lives happily with his unusual family. While Leica like Studios gave us some of the most gorgeous movies this decade with Coraline and Kubo, they did make one mistake, Box Trolls. It was such a dry, boring movie that I remember someone in my theater snoring. I felt like there was some theme about clothing not defining you, but it just feels surface level, as do the characters. It's just sad. So much effort was put into the animation for such a slog of a film. But yes, I do know it has some fans out there. Ba, 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 na, na. Oh. Here's another company that started this decade, Illumination, who I don't feel they're as bad as most people say, but they're not exactly the most inventive studio. The marketing behind the Lorax completely screwed up the message of the books, and Secret Life of Pets 2 felt like three unrelated short films from a DVD bonus feature, while their cash cow, Despicable Me and the Minions, is a franchise they're running into the ground. At best, Illumination's been good, but nothing special, and at worst, Hop. Well, it's technically the funniest Russell Brand movie I sat through, also the only one I could sit through. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We'll be back after these messages with more terrible cartoons. I 
I'm sorry I wrapped you up, Eddie. Merry Christmas! Whoa, 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 whoa! Welcome to the park. Have a nice day. Oh. Wonder Park is apparently the first movie in the history of cinema without a director. How does that even work? Truthfully, they fired the director after he got Me too and took his name out of the credits. Although, judging by the movie's insane structure, it feels like there really was no director. The movie is a bullet point list of good ideas but with zero room to breathe or develop. It has one of the most abrupt shifts between happiness to sadness I've ever seen. It's a tonal mess and apparently a TV show is being made for Nickelodeon despite it bombing. Good luck with that ass! Assholes, but it could be good. I enjoyed Big Hero 6's TV show more than the movie, so you never know. What is going on? Fact is, Mars needs moms, so the aliens are stealing them from Earth to raise their own kids. <laughs> Who mothering was so hard? It's the third time I'm talking about this. Maybe Mars Needs Moms isn't so bad. It at least killed off fully mo cap movies, so that's a plus. Release the Seth Green cut already. Time to smash! Why are action cartoons dead when superhero movies are as big as ever? Here's one answer. You make a hero movie, everyone knows it's coming out. PG-13, anyone can watch it and will buy merch for it. You make a hero cartoon for TV, only people watching that channel will know it, but mostly kids. Movies have a greater reach, but don't worry, Disney and Marvel have continued to make tons of... Eh, Marvel cartoons that only seem to be getting more and more bland. Like, look at how flat Marvel Spider-Man looks. These guys look like they're gonna update me on their Steven Universe fan theories. Here's an art tip. Get two circles, lower the brightness, and higher the contrast. Bam, shadows. It's not accurate to the lighting, but it looks better. Someone turned that into a plug-in or something. But I say the worst Marvel cartoon of the decade is Hulk Agents of Smash, featuring an entourage of various Hulks. Imagine a YouTube editor who is so desperate to impress you by using every single transition effect Premiere Pro has to offer. That's this show. I don't want to be a spidey sickle. Gotcha. Scar slash. Can't believe they actually did it. The entire series is like that. It is offensive to me as someone who edits. This show is the N-word to video editors. You are not real. You're just some hormone monster my brain created. If I'm not real, then how come I'm sending blood to your sweet penis right now? <laughs> Big Mouth is possibly the most divisive show on here. It's all about puberty, a cartoon full of underage characters that's so gross and uncomfortable that if these ugly kids were replaced with moe anime girls, it'd be regarded as an anime classic. I'm in that group that feels disgusted by it while asking, how is there five seasons so far announced for this? But there's also those I love it for making the topic of puberty relatable. I guess so. Sometimes you just need to see a fictional character going through the same issues you're going through to have some peace of mind. Still, I don't like it. <laughs> WB. Just WB in general. Well, not really. They made a ton of great stuff, but at the same time, the opposite. I don't know what's the deal with their straight-to-video division. You got, like, one or two Scooby-Doo movies per year. They made a sequel to Zombie Island that retcons everything you loved about the original. They also had all these WWE crossovers. Why? Why not? To clarify, Surf's Up Wave Mania was made by Sony, but yeah, this was a weird time in animation. There was Batman the Killing Joke and Harley Quinn meet Batman or whatever. Oh, holy. It's not so bad. Smells like discipline. Actually, my sense of humor is pretty awful. I probably like that movie. This video is a mixture of popular suggestions and ones I personally hated. But anyway, WB also pumped out a bunch of Tom and Jerry crossovers with The Wizard of Oz and Willy Wonka. It being released a year after Gene Wilder's death did not do it any favors. Hey, you know what's an actual good crossover idea? How about Tom and Jerry meet John Wick? I'm serious. What if every cat in the city is after Jerry and Jerry has to fight them all? It's ripe full of physical comedy. It's a stupid idea, but makes more sense when you think Think about it. Okay, I'm tired of editing this BS, so here's a bunch of cartoons I already reviewed in other videos. Ugly Dolls. 
they weren't ugly. Alan Gregory. It lasted six episodes and none of them were good. Bands on the Run, a movie made in under a year to cash in on the silly bands craze. So what else came out this decade? I don't remember. Let's get into the number one worst cartoon of the year. Actually, I mean decade. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction, Chemical X. And here we are at number one. I'm sure people want me to put Teen Titans Go on the list, but that at least stands on its own, comfortable being its own thing while sometimes delving into fan service. No, the number one should represent the worst the decade has to offer, and that's the Powerpuff Girls 2016. <laughs> It's a reboot among many that sits in this weird middle ground of being too different from the old show to please old fans, while it's not self-contained enough to be an entry point for a new generation of kids. OMG! Yes! At least Teen Titans Go! actually revels in sometimes malicious and oddly sexual humor. It really pushes boundaries at times, like that one scene where they meet Batman's parents. <laughs> But Powerpuff Girls 2016 feels like the most generic, clean, friendly cartoon with no personality. It apes on the most current trends while exploiting and misrepresenting social issues. It's so proud of its girl power message, yet they recasted or removed many of the female voice actors while many of the male cast members returned. <laughs> nice. Powerpuff Girls 2016 is Teen Titans Go done wrong. Yeah, I said it. Will I ever do part two of the Powerpuff Girls review? Nah, I got other topics I want to do. Who wants to see me cover more OG Xbox games? Say, hey. Don't give up. Challenge again. Stuff, Switch. For a limited time, get Mario Kart Double Dash free when you buy a Nintendo GameCube for $99.99. Rated everyone. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. 